Guys, welcome to Ron's Basement live stream. Today is the 18th of April, 2023. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, we're also going to adjust the camera here a little bit. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. There we go. We got a ton to talk about today. Uh, one thing I want to cover with you and get your opinion on is, are we headed for a big market crash? Seems like that's the popular narrative right now. Everyone's saying, oh, the market's going to crash. And of course, the other part of that narrative is that the gold price and silver price are also going to go down precipitously and the mining stocks. And then the final part of that narrative is that gold and silver will shoot right back up. Now, I'm not saying I disagree with that, but I'd also like to examine the other side of that possibility, uh, being that since everybody's expecting that to happen and there's so much money on the sidelines that maybe uh, it may not play out like everybody thinks it will. It seems like a lot of times, I don't know if you've experienced this, but a lot of times in life, like when everybody says something's going to happen, um, oftentimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes it does. So let me know. I'm going to ask you this question to start out. Answer yes. If you think we're going to have a market crash, let's say before the end of the year, and you also think that gold and silver are going to go down seriously, like $17, $18 silver again. Or if you think that things could be different this time, and you think that there may or may not be a crash, but the gold and silver are going to hang tight, say no. I'll be honest. I'm in the no camp, but I'm often wrong. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Jim. Jim Tillipaw. Jim, you need to let me know if you received your uh, American Silver Eagle, please. Neil says it will crash. Interesting. Neil, do you think the price of gold and silver will also crash? And of course, your good friend, Platinum. Dollar down, silver up. I'm going to try to run through some of the comments. Thank you guys, all of you, for being here today. Of course, you know how important that is. Boy, we got a lot of comments. All right. Hey, guys. Hey, Adrian. Jerry. Okay, Adrian. Yeah, no tornado today. I apologize to you guys on, uh, what was that, Saturday night. Boy, we had some nasty weather come through here. I had a 45-second live stream, maybe tied for the shortest ever on YouTube, uh, before the tornado sirens went off. So we had to do the old uh, um, safety first. Hey, Blaine. Yep, I'm in the basement. Um, I guess you guys can hear me, and I think I remembered to press the go live button, so thank you. Is Tower Grove, I see a low blood pressure. Um, yes and no, there's a lot of old houses in Tower Grove, a very interesting area. It is the city, um, so it's maybe has a little bit just crime rate than you'll get out in the county. Send me an email if you want to. I can give you my opinion on the different areas of St. Louis. All right. Bear with me here, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm adjusting to my new basement live stream setup. Hello, Chris. Chris. Chris P. Thank you, Chris, for being here and helping from the vault. <laughs> yeah. Neil. Unicorn fart dollars. Neil, 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 Neil. Hey, Blaine. Yeah, I remember, Gerald. I remember, remember that? You guys probably remember that Geraldo Rivera big deal uh, when he was breaking into Al Capone's vault. I was 16 years old. I remember watching it, and it was like at the end, there was nothing in there. But big to do for nothing. That would be what my vault would look like here in the basement, by the way. Uh, thank you, Neil. Yes, guys, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. And if you remember to give it a thumbs up, that'd be greatly appreciated. I also want to talk about the Unicoin. Have you guys heard about the Unicoin? Um, <clears throat> I read some interesting things about that this morning. That's the new supposed IMF oriented, I'll call it at this point, central bank digital currency that the big central banks are going to use between each other. But there's some conflicting stories out there about the Unicoin. 
All right, I'm trying to get through some comments here. If you guys have a question, uh, leave that in all caps. Dollar down, ba -ba, push the button, gold up. Yeah, so I was doing some filming right before I got on here, but I ran upstairs and asked Susie, and she said, hey, gold's up. So um, I think maybe like $12, $13. That's good news. We deserve it. I don't see silver going down again. Awesome. Carlito, we like that. Radzlav Taplowski. Yes, but everything other than the metals will plummet lower. I kind of feel that way. I kind of feel like I know that, you know, history often repeats itself. And usually when the market, I mean, if the market has a real big crash, I think the metals could go down. Okay. But I don't think that the powers that, that be, they don't want to do a complete crash reset. I could be wrong, right? Because that would potentially hurt them as well. And I think that, that like, I don't, I think there's a different perception right now in the world, a different, oh, paradigm. I don't like that word, but it's the only one that comes to mind when it comes to the approach to silver and gold. And don't forget, we're such a small portion of the people out there. It's different. I read something the other day that said when Roosevelt confiscated all the gold from Americans in, in the 1930s, that like 90% of Americans owned gold or silver as like an investment back then. And then this article said that now that number in the United States is more like 3%. Three, three um, you know, there's not a lot of us right? Here's my one 10 ounce silver bar that own this stuff. So uh, things could be different this time. All right. You guys didn't come here just to hear me talk. The CBDC is going to crash everything. Platinum's doing great. Neil will be happy about that. A controlled crash. Ron is the unofficial mayor of St. Louis. Yeah. I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> Tennessee, Lynn, good to see you. Korean silver stacker, are you in Korea? If you are, let us know how easy, how hard in Korea right now, I presume South Korea, is it to get silver and gold? I'll tell you what. I work at night at a little high-end music school right by my house. I've worked there for 15 years since I retired from the corporate world the age of 38. Um, it's a little part-time job at a real high-end music school. A lot of the people are from Asia, or some. In South Korea, our people, people from South Korea are very, very nice, without exception. Very nice people. This one teacher has this little boy. He's five years old. He's the cutest kid in the world. He comes in every week. He says, hey, Ron. Hi, Ron. And when he first came with his mom a year ago, he couldn't speak any English. So it's really good to see him learning. Okay. Raina Silver is holding up well. Hey, from Michigan. Good to see you. Paper Silver will push silver down. The Mississippi Preppers here. North Korea. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we have anybody on the live stream from North Korea. If we do, please speak up. <laughs> Hi, Adrian. The normal ratio. Yeah, I think you're talking about the <coughs> silver to gold ratio. Um, 10 to 1. Yeah, could you imagine that? I mean, if we get to $3,000 silver, or gold, I'm sorry, and we have a 10 to 1 silver to gold ratio, um, that, uh, if my advanced mathematics are correct, means $300 silver. I think, you know, I put out this video yesterday that said $750 silver. I think that um, that we've been beaten down so bad that we think like, you know, $40 silver. Oh, man. And that would be awesome, right? Don't get me wrong, because I'm busting myself on this as well. But I don't think we we give enough credence to the, uh, excuse me, to the um, possibility that we could see like really skyrocketing silver prices. Like, hundreds of dollars silver prices. It, I mean, it could happen. I mean, look at, I mean, oil. And I know we're not comparing apples to apples. We're comparing oil to silver. 
But look at oil. Oil's a huge market, right? Probably, I think the biggest, it is the biggest trading commodity in the world. I mean, it was negative at one point. It was $5 a barrel. It was $20 a barrel. It's quadrupled, right? It's gone up to $200. I mean, it's a massive commodity, multiple, multiple times bigger than silver. All it would take is a couple of rich guys to get the silver. I mean, I was watching... I'd highly recommend, or at least I like, was watching Arcadia Economics last night. Darn it, what's the guy's name? I've got it written down somewhere. Bear with me. Vince Latchy. Uh, Chris Marcus uh, did an interview with uh, Vince Latchy, and he kind of, you know, not real super deep, but he kind of they kind of dove into the COMEX and the LBMA. Guys, there's still not, like, there's hardly not much silver in the vaults of the LBMA and the COMEX. I mean, like, not a lot at all. It's not out of the realm of possibility that those markets break. And they were even saying that it used to be like they would trade amongst them, back and forth amongst themselves, but that stopped. So, I don't know. You guys are awesome. I'm glad we're down in the basement now. It is, wait a minute. Yep, there it is. Anybody say, I'm going to pick the bunny rabbit's nose. Nobody said anything about the big bunny. It's the big plywood bunny I have to deal with every year because my wife, Susie, right? Remember? That's Susie. Everybody, please say hi to Susie. She helps out a lot with the channel. Best wife in the world, but she really loves the holidays. Uh, Christmas, Easter, Halloween. So I have to go through this whole process. I don't know if anybody else has to deal with this where I've got all this stuff. You've seen how the basement's packed, right? All these boxes, some say Christmas, some say Halloween, some say Easter, and I have to get them out, and then she puts all the stuff up, and then I have to carry that giant plywood rabbit upstairs and get him situated with, like, rebar nailed into the yard. And then I tried to take him down over the weekend, and we had, like, 40-mile-an-hour wind, and the damn, his, one of his legs fell off. Um, anyway, I digress. You guys, you don't want to hear about my personal life, do you? I hope you don't. Everybody says, hi, Susie. All right, Susie, everybody says, hi. She says, hello, she's upstairs. All right, she doesn't bring coffee. No, you have to try to t tell me how you get your wife to do that. The LBMA has more rocks than a crackhead. <laughs> yeah. If you, I guess if you get nickel delivered to you from the LBMA, apparently instead of nickel, they had some bags of rocks. All right, guys, any questions? Don't forget, uh, ring the bell. Yeah, I'll ring the bell one more time. $32 buffalo is yucky feeling. Yeah, right. To get, to get one, um, to get one, uh, round, $32. Crazy. Crazy. See if I have any questions, anything I missed. North Korea. More live streams. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, as always, to Chris P. for helping out with moderating the live streams, helping out in many, many ways with the channel. I really appreciate it. So somebody tell me, somebody, let's get an update here. Is gold up right now? Is silver up right now? <laughs> no low blood pressure. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe when we get to 20,000 subscribers and we need to start talking about some big giveaways we're going to do when we hit 20,000 subscribers as well. Blaine in. <clears throat> yeah, Blaine brings up a good point, guys. $32 is a steal when silver gets to $85. We forget about that, right? Like we we think Oh, it's so high over spot, blah, blah, blah. Well, premiums are high. Premiums are high. Well, if silver goes to $50 uh, and you paid $32 to get an ounce right now and it goes to $50 and it costs you $60 or $65 to get one then, it's going to seem like a really good deal. 2017 for gold. Thank you, Mountain Bullion Entertainment. And $25.48 for silver. That's awesome! Yay! Yay! I know, I'm not supposed to watch the price. It's a long term, and I'm not looking to get rich off silver and gold, just preserve my wealth, but I really like it when the price goes up. I have to be honest, but we don't 
darn it, there I go again. And, you know, do we think of our metals in terms of fiat? Uh, where is it? Fiat? There it is. Unicorn fart dust? I mean, is that what we, is that what we think of? Is that, how we sh is that how we value our precious metals? It's hard not to, since that's how we've pretty much been taught since we were little babies to value everything. But really, right? What is this? Is this $300 or 10 ounces? I'm going to ask you that question, guys. Is this 10 ounces or $300? put that in the comments because it's hard to you know it's hard to remember that it's just like when i say i'm gonna go buy some silver i'm not buying anything i'm converting paper money into real money i'm not buying anything right i shouldn't have to say pay sales tax on it and i shouldn't have to pay capital gains tax when it goes up in price right 10 ounces i love it yeah 10 ounces for sure Hello, Radislav Topolsky, James Berryhill. It's $5,200. <laughs> Good to see you, Neil. Unicorn fart dust incoming. Yeah, oh, yeah, unicorn fart dust. Thank you. So the unicorn um, started getting a lot, of, um, a lot of attention. I'm sorry, I'm still reading. Hey, Craig, that's awesome. Call uh, Paul Morris or email him. Tell him you want to talk to him uh, from First Mining Gold, okay? He can give you a lot of good info about the company. Really good info. 10 ounces, 10 ounces. All right. Ounces, Adrian Blaine. Not many people are alive that are around before the Federal Reserve System. Yeah, that's part of the problem here, too, in the United States, guys. I mean, if you think about it, it's no wonder I didn't learn about the value of silver and gold until 20 years ago, roughly, is when I first, well, really right before Y2K, uh, I was thinking about, it's when I first learned about gold, but I didn't really, really get into it until about 20 years ago because it was illegal, right? From 1933 through 1974, it was illegal to own silver and gold in the United States. So nobody, you know, very few, it kind of got the, the, the knowledge base dissolved, right? If that's a good way to say it. Um, and then in 1971, President Nixon just temporarily took us off the gold standard, right? And we know uh, that and then at that point, the United States government wasn't real interested in, um, in promoting the value of silver and gold because they took the dollar off the gold standard. Why would they? Then it became competition, right? Anyway, I digress. Hello, Gary from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I stack crap. No, you stack scrap. <laughs> British Hallmark Hallmark silver here. They charge a 20% tax on money. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Tax on money. Yeah. I I agree, my friend. Good news. Eli, and soon that one bedroom tent will cost 11,300. Mr. E, silver and gold is only worth how much many other hard commodities you can acquire from the transaction. Dragonfly, my husband works for a municipality and they all have a 401k and they said we can't take any money out of it and we can't convert it. It's invested in black. Yeah, I know. I, I feel your pain. I understand. Platinum's breaking out, Tani Luber says. I bet that makes Neil happy. Yeah, rightfully so. Neil's a good guy. Two to three dollars in the nineties to a high of five hundred in the twenties. Yak now looks like a move happened before. Eli, it's already there. Goya, can the Fed chairman go to jail? <laughs> yeah. Stacking food will become the new thing. Yes, Traviso Revisio, I won't touch my stack until it's a hundred ounces per house. See? That's the way to think about it. That's a good way to think about it, right? Think about 
converting at some point silver or if you have gold gold you know like oh um maybe for 10 ounces i'll buy a nice d11 uh caterpillar bulldozer or something like that or something useful real some land uh re rental houses um oil fields i don't know real stuff but there might come a little window for us guys where it's going to be attractive to do that and we can talk about that here in the basement. Months or years uh, before it went up 30 times in the 70s. Yes, it was. It took years and there were fits and starts. It wasn't like, you know, gold and silver just immediately took up. And it's important to remember, Adrian, um, that uh, uh, those were spike highs. The $50 silver and the $800 gold were kind of spikes and then they pulled back. Although I think like with gold, uh, we're talking about the, the price run in the 70s and 80s. With gold, it was interesting. I think it started at 40 and went as high as 800 and then pulled back to about 200, I believe. So it's still at the end of the day during that process had gone up five times in value. And we know where it is today. It's you know, it pulled back to 200. Well, now it's at 2000, apparently 2017. Yeah, right, huh? That's good news. That's 10 times higher than, so, you know. Hello, Christina. I had somebody, here we go. Singapore, Anthony Dobson, where investment grade bullion is tax-free. However, only 0.999 is considered investment grade, which rules out American Gold Eagle, sadly. Yeah, I'm not a gold coin guru, but I was interested. Uh, the Gold Eagle is, I, I saw something about that. I didn't realize that. Like, it's not pure, pure gold. Maybe Chris P or somebody can chime in and give us some information on that one. Britcoin. <laughs> All right. Toto, pulling back the curtain. Better be trading for silver or farmland. Yes. You guys need to understand silver and gold are just investment vehicles. Is 5K and silver enough? Well, that depends if you mean euros, dollars, ounces. I would think ounces for an individual, that's a pretty darn nice looking stack you got there, my friend. All right, hold on here. Hold on here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I lost track. I just bought an ounce of gold, so I'm sure it will drop. No, John, don't think that way, John Walsh. I know, I understand. Trust me, that's why I'm preaching at you. Don't think that way. You buy things and it goes up. I can, I can sure tell we have a lot of newbies. Yeah, and the newbies are welcome. New people uh, coming to the silver and gold world, we need to welcome them with open arms. We were all newbies at one point as well. And, um, you know, new people are welcome and, you know, they may be, uh, they may be, how do I say this, uh, getting onto the boat here with us just before it leaves the port, you know, like the people, the rest of the people are going to be sitting on the, on the dock watching the silver and gold boat go away because there's not going to be much more room. Uh, there's not a lot more room. We saw what happened just, you know, in the last couple of weeks. I think the next wave could could be the one that uh, oh breaks the seawall, if that makes sense. All right, terrible news for new stackers, 2011. So I have a question for you guys: Would you would you trade an American Silver Eagle? For a dollar forty worth of ninety percent U.S. constitutional, uh, some people call it junk. And when you get a dollar forty worth of ninety percent silver, you're getting a full ounce of silver. So you would get a dollar forty face worth of constitutional silver. Would you trade that for a one ounce American? Excuse me, American Silver Eagle, because the premiums on both those products are super high. Just curious. Just curious. 
some cash. Hello, MC from Germany. Welcome to see you. Interesting. Yeah, so a gold eagle has one troy ounce of gold, but it also has copper and silver for hardness. Thank you, the happy camper. Um, yeah, so I guess I, don't, I guess it's not considered 0.999, so it's not investment grade. That's interesting. 40% silver halves. That's what I like. I did like, but boy, the the uh, the premiums on everything have just gone through the roof. I've been converting my paper, gold and silver keeping now. Good for you, Bleed Freedom. LOL, it's hard not to look at the spot price of the day after a big buy. Yeah, no, I get it. I'm not Christina. I'm Christian. Oh, like Christian in French. Hello, Chris, Christian, Chris, like Christian. Okay, Christian, Christian Rona, welcome. Like, share, subscribe. So did you guys hear about this uh, Unicoin from the IMF? This big announcement, right? It was going to be the CBDC that the central banks were going to use between each other. And it was big news and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the IMF came out supposedly and said, oh, no, we're not involved with this at all. I mean, there's so much electronic CBDC stuff going on, right? The British are developing, the Americans, we are developing one. All the major countries are developing their own central bank digital currencies. It's coming. Um, man, I hope they don't make the mistake to try to confiscate gold or silver from the, uh, from the stacking community because I don't think that is going to go over. And that's definitely not going to go over like it would was in 1930. Let me ask that question. Do you guys think in the coming, let's say, two years that there will be another confiscation act uh, where the governments will require citizens to turn in their silver and gold? Say yes if you think they will confiscate or no. I think no. I think it's a different world this time, and I don't think people are going to put up with it. No. What? <laughs> I like your answer, William Davis. That's right. I don't, you know, if they want to come and get this from me, that's, you know what, they're going to send in the troops. They can, they can come. That, that's all I have. Yes. Hey, Doug, we were just saying, asking about whether or not we thought there could be another gold confiscation. No, Big E says no. Joe Prepper says no. Slap that huge Hugh ass says no. Will not be long enough. They don't need to. No, they don't need to. Why are people saying yes and no? Because we asked if we thought that country, if, if, if countries, governments would try to confiscate gold and silver here in the future. Over my dead body, no, no, no. Yeah, it's a different group now. That's what I'm saying. Like, F no, Azure, Texas Tater says no silver dart. Copper is poor man silver. Yeah, it's going to be getting that way, isn't it? I've got a beautiful copper round that was given to me by a good friend. I'm going to show you guys this. They do make copper rounds. Right? I'm going to show you this. Take it out. Look at it. It's cool and it's heavy. Let's see if I can get that up there. Yeah, a really nice copper round that a good friend of mine who I know just happens to be on the live stream gave me. So don't discount copper. It's really, it's cool. It's cool to have and I keep it here on my desk because I like it and I also happen to like the guy that gave it to me. And you know who you are. Uh, they, Ron, they can't control small riots. How will confiscate? Yeah, good point. Good point. Nobody can buy silver for $20 for years. Boo, 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 boo. The dog ate my stack. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know why I'm going to ask this question. Well, I'm just, anyway, no, nope, I won't ask that question. The government, but nobody will turn it on. All right, let me get let me let me consult my notes for a second. Uh, I'll be right back, guys. I'm gonna run over and grab my water so I don't start coughing on you.
What about Operation Sandman? Can you guys see me? Huh? Hello, everybody. This is the $2,500 bear talking to you. <laughs> Seriously, what about Operation Sandman? I keep, I don't know much about it, but I keep hearing people talk about this rumor, I guess we'll call it, right? I don't want to be spreading rumors, so I'll emphasize that it's probably a rumor at this point, but that the there's a, a conglomeration of countries that are talking about like simultaneously dumping the dollar. Has anybody else heard about this? I've heard other, you know, people talk about it. And anyway... Um, somebody asked about the squeaky bottle. I took the lid off. <laughs> Susie yelled at me, stop doing the squeaky bottle on your videos. So this Friday, interesting, huh? Good morning, Carl. Silver is already $25 now. Yeah. So, um, just interesting. The Sandman thing. I mean, again, I don't know much about it. I think it, to me, it seems like a rumor, um, I don't want to spread rumors, but I've heard a lot of people talking about it. So um, that could be interesting. Do you think the banking crisis is over, guys? Right? I mean, that's what, um, yeah, I know. Thank you. I see that, uh, Adrian. Right. You can thank me for silver going up. <laughs> when it goes down, don't thank me. Um, Belgium. Cool. I may be close to you. Is How far is Belgium from Paris, my friend? Smoking a couple of briskets. Oh, man. Jim Tillipow. Jim, send me an email and let me know an email because I can't follow in the comments. And let me know. Jim won an American Silver Eagle giveaway that I did last Tuesday. Yeah, last Tuesday. I mailed it that day. I put two stamps on it, put it in an envelope, sealed it up with tape, mailed it off, and I don't think it's arrived yet. And that really bothers me. So um, anyway, let me know and we can communicate later today. Um, yeah, I love the uh, barbecue. I, I don't know if you guys do. Let, let me ask that question. Do you love to barbecue or smoke meat? I'd just be curious. Are you, do you like to barbecue or smoke meat? I know this is about silver and gold, right? But I'm curious, do you like to barbecue or smoke meat? I'm actually going to barbecue uh, at lunchtime today because I go, go to work at 3 o'clock a um, couple nice sirloin steaks. I was at the local grocery store the other day. I usually go there. They'll have a lot of half-off deals. And they had a couple of them, but they weren't that good at deals. They were like grass-fed beef, blah, blah, blah. It was like already overpriced. So even at half price, it was overpriced. But they had sirloin on sale in the butcher case for $7.99 a pound. I was like, I got like two sirloins, big ones for, uh, and I've had good luck with sirloin. All right. I don't smoke meat. I just bought a new smoker. Awesome. Hey, Germany, nearest to us is the UK. A mind with a heart, smoked meat, then finish in the house in the oven. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. I live in Mississippi. Do you need to toast <laughs> barbecue even in the winter? Yeah. Hey, Neil. Hey, Jester. Barbecue is the national meal of Texas. Yeah, I know they do it right. And to do a brisket is hard. All right. Make sure you reinforce any envelope you send a coin and wrap the coin. Yeah, I did. I wrapped it in like a like two sheets of paper and I taped it into it and it didn't feel, but it was a regular envelope. So maybe I screwed up. I will make it right. Yeah. Uh, Susie makes a great corned beef in this big cast iron pot thing, guys. Oh, it's to die for. All right. Brisket is the best smoked. Yeah. I love yeah, pulled pork. Yep. 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 All right. Let's get back to gold and silver. All right, Operation Sandman, I covered that. So are we in for a depression? That's the other question, right? You hear some people saying, oh, the economy, and I've heard some reputable people talk about the prospects of a depression. Retail sales numbers were down. Manufacturing numbers were down. I think the big X factor in all that, that we don't really, that we kind of forget about, I think we all know it's there, but we kind of forget about, is the level of debt in the world, right? Like, 
The Federal Reserve ra raised rates at the fastest pace in history over the last year, and they're going to apparently raise them again. There's like an 88% chance now that uh, on March, I'm sorry, May 22nd and 23rd is the next Fed meeting, and there's like a 90% chance, according to the futures or however they calculate it, that they're going to raise rates again. So that's been priced in. All right, so don't have to worry. People say, oh, they're going to, when they raise rates, gold's going to go down. Well, if they raise rates more than has been priced in now, yes, it will. Um, but I don't think enough, enough, we don't give enough weight to the fact that we have more debt right now in the world, in the U.S., no matter how you slice it or dice it, than ever before. So those interest rate hikes that were so drastic and so fast, right? I mean, I think it's like, we have like four times more debt now than we did um, uh, even during the financial crisis. And then like when you compare the amount of debt in the world now to the 1970s and 80s, when Volcker could raise rates to like 15%, it was like minuscule compared to the amount of debt now. So it's it's like this. Think about this, guys. And you, you may learn something here if you don't know this already. Think about if you as a person had... Ten thousand dollars in debt, and the interest rate on the on the on the debt that you had doubled. Okay, so let's say you were paying five percent, five hundred dollars a year, and now it goes to ten percent. You're going from paying five thousand a year to a thousand a year. You can probably absorb that, right? Work a few extra hours, go deliver a couple pizzas, whatever. If you have a hundred thousand dollars in debt, and the rate goes from five percent. To 10%, it's going from $5,000 a year of interest expense to $10,000. That's an extra $5,000. It becomes much more material. And that's what I'm saying. And the world in aggregate, the world in whole, um, these, these interest rates, I mean, they already went up drastically. It has a major impact. It Businesses, small, mid-sized businesses, right, that, that are living off loans, like their borrowing costs have doubled. We're going to see big waves of bankruptcies, very likely, right? On an individual level, right? People are, are paying more interest. Credit card rates are like at all-time highs. Um, you know, it's got to it's going to have a big impact. I'm sorry, I went off on a little diatribe. More inflation, yeah. Well, part of the inflation, that's the other thing. The Fed can't can really control the, the 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 best the Fed can do to control inflation now is crash the economy. They don't want to do that. The Fed can't control. The Fed doesn't have as much control now as they had in the seventies and eighties, even just ten years ago during the financial crisis. Right? We had a lot more um, carried a lot more weight in the world as compared to now, where we're seeing all these countries that are kind of moving away from. The U.S. dominance, the dollar hegemony. All right. No tax on silver bars in Minnesota. Debt-free. Good. I'm a big proponent of being debt-free. You know? Hello, Jim. Jim Tillipow. All right. Did I miss anything? All right, guys. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. We're going to go strong. We're going to finish strong for the next six minutes. Um Questions, anything that I missed? Thank you, Chris, for reminding everyone to like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate you guys being here. You know what? Probably the most important thing I can do is say thank you uh, to you right now. We are a small group of people, right? I mean, uh, even within the YouTube community, and there's other great people that may put content out on YouTube, no doubt about it, but we are still a small community of people. It's important we stick together. Uh, when you're here with me in the basement, I don't know, maybe I, I, they call me basement man now. Maybe I'll call you, you're a cellar dweller. <laughs> Welcome to the cellar. We're cellar dwellers in a good way, right? Trust me. When gold hits 2,500, I will do a live stream from the roof of the house. And it's high. I have a two-story house, but I can get up there. I've done it before. And I will do a brief live stream from the roof of the house. Susie may not like it. My neighbors may not like it. But I'll have clothes on, so what the heck. The Basement Family, yeah. 
for the cellar dwellers. We're the basement family. I kind of like that too, William. Thank you. Any other ideas on what we could call ourselves? Cellar dwellers, basement family. I like that basement family. We're a family that lives in the basement, but not for long. Because don't forget, you know, don't forget, at some point we're going to go on a road, a road trip and come see everybody. I've just bought some UVXY. All right, good luck with that one. I've had my fingers burnt by UVXY before, Jim. I hope you do much better than me. I'm sure you will. Basement Buddies. Hey, that's a good one. <laughs> Can we all fit in Ron's vault? Basement Buddies, yeah. <laughs> I like that. I'm writing these down. You guys are great. All right. What else is going on we can touch on here? <clears throat> Subterranean stackers. <laughs> That's a good one. Underground stackers. Silver rats. Yeah. I'd rather be at a CD with a bowel. I'd rather be a CD than a bowel movement. <laughs> Silver rats. Basement bottom dwellers. Yeah, I'd be the secret squirrels. The, se <laughs> the secret silver squirrels. Meeting of the mines underground. The silver sellers. Yeah, but I was going to say the silver sliver. We are the silver sliver, but I don't like calling us that. The basement apes. Yeah, thank you, Neil. Bear cave. <laughs> <clears throat> Guys, thank you. Um, looks, last I heard, gold and silver were up. And you know what? I have to be honest. Uh, I do watch the price of gold and silver. I have a lot at stake. I imagine a lot of you guys do too, right? We have... Um, you know, a chunk of our net worth, some of us more than others. Uh, let's just say if I went to a traditional financial planner, I'd get lectured about diversification. I know that. I understand that. But, you know, we have a lot at stake, so we care about this. And we dive into these, you know, what can at times be unsettling subjects, right? We can get mad. I mean, when we learn about what's going on with the financial system, it can get us a little mad. We need to stick together, right? Support each other. I'm always so grateful for the for the uh, support that I get from everybody here in the basement. I'm going to sign off, okay? But I'll be back uh, hopefully over the weekend. If not, you can always count on me like clockwork on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Uh, if you have any questions, if you need anything, please. Um, uh, oh, 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 Chris. Okay, yeah, let me, oh, all right, all right, all right. Wait, wait, don't hang up. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. Chris uh, P. brought something to my attention, forwarded it to me. Very interesting that these banks, he had gotten some information from these banks about seven-day and 30-day, 30 31-day CDs at really high rates, like a seven-day CD at like four and a half percent. A seven-day CD or a 30-day CD at like 4.5%, whatever it is. And we were kind of scratching our heads, and then we, it was interesting. About the same time, we both came to the same conclusion. It's like, um, maybe it's because the banks need money, right? They need money right now. They need to rob Peter to pay Paul, if that makes sense. What do you guys think about that? And then what became even more interesting to me last night um, was after Chris and I talked, I was going through our mail that came yesterday and Chase Bank sent me this little packet that said six free $600, which, you know, it's too good to be true. It usually is, but I opened it up and it said, if you open a checking account with us or you open a savings account, you got like 300 if you open a checking account and like another 200 if you open a savings account. And I thought they want money. They need money. They need liquidity. Um, so I just thought that was very interesting. Liquidity, yeah. Yep, thank you. Hello, Joe. Seven-day risk or 10-day risk. Silver Basement Club. So yeah, this just, I, I don't think the, the, is the banking crisis over? Heck no, right? These banks, oh, they're reporting, you know, unbelievable earnings. Well, what they're not reporting, what Bank of America forgot to tell you this morning in their report, right, was that 
they have unrealized losses on their books of like probably billions of dollars. Okay. But they don't have to report it because um, they don't have to do mark to market. You know, it'd be like if I'll end with this, but it'd be like if you bought $25,000 worth of, uh, of some stock, right? In January, and you got to the end of the year and your spouse said, how's that stock doing? Uh, and it was down 50%. And you're like, oh, it's doing just great. It's doing awesome. You know, we're not going to, uh, until we sell it, we don't take the loss. Well, you know, the stock's not doing great, right? The market price is half of where it is now. Everybody, thanks for being here. Don't forget, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Press the bell. That way you'll get notified every time I put out a video. Most important, be well. And at the latest, I'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you.